Now that we have our grid layout created, let's bring in our first main asset, the globe. So I'm gonna file place, I'm gonna bring that in, file place. Oops, I need to have a new layer first. So new layer, I'm gonna name it globe because that's what we're gonna put on there, we're staying organized. And I'm gonna choose file place. And within my global warming folder, I have downloaded the globe JPEG. Yours is probably called something different like a series of numbers. It's linked in the mission for you to download. And make sure none of these things are check marked, okay? And I'm gonna click place, and I'm just gonna click kind of in the middle of the screen here. So what we're doing is we're creating a vector-based flyer or poster for a global warming conference. This is an image, and if you remember from earlier in the semester, Vector is what we've been doing in illustration with text. I mean, an illustrator with text and illustrations and shapes. It's kind of a mathematical formula. You can make vector artwork big, small, everywhere in between, and it doesn't get blurry. It doesn't get pixelated. Right? A picture, as we know, as you make it bigger, gets blurry, gets pixelated. It's made up of a bunch of pixels, and those little dots expand, and they get blurry. We could take the time and pin tool this, right? If we wanted to be accurate, if the globe was the most important thing, we might take the time to pin tool it. But this is just a kind of supplemental asset, part of a bigger whole. It's not the focus. We don't need to be that detailed. So we can cheat a little bit. We can use a built-in feature of Illustrator called image trace, right? I don't want you to rely on this. This isn't something you're gonna use all the time, but it's something for a quick and easy element like this. We wanna control it. There's many options, so we wanna hit the down arrow next to it. And with it selected, right, I selected it with the selection tool, right, you can see the box around it, and then down arrow. I wanna choose low fidelity photo. It's gonna do its magic. It's trying to guess how to turn this picture into vector artwork. Right, and that's what it did. And you can kind of see this banding and stuff as it used, I don't know how many colors. I'm not really sure, but there's different options, but I like this one for what we're doing. Then we need to expand it, right? So we're gonna convert the tracing object into path. Just means that way we can click on different parts and either recolor it, delete it, whatever we need to do. So we're gonna expand it, turns it into paths. And I wanna take my direct selection tool, my white arrow, and I want to get rid of this outside stuff and all of that splatter, right? Get rid of all of that, double click, and then you can have, let's see, I'm gonna to try to get rid of everything I need except for that blue, and I could see a couple little splatters in there. All right, highlight, make sure there's nothing out there. Okay, we're doing good. So that gives us our globe as a vector, right? You can see all these little paths that guessed on the color. What I wanna do is I have this grid and I wanna create visual interest with the asymmetrical design so things are a little off balance. I want my globe to kind of come down on this and I'm going to drag my layer below the grid so I can see where the grid lines are. So I want it something like this. I can even make it a little bit bigger if I wanted, right? Anyhow, I want to kind of focus on having it come off the bottom, and then I want to make sure the continent, main continent's not cut off here. And then if it goes outside of this line a little bit, it's fine, right? And it kind of giving us an idea of same thing as that, right? It's going off the edge, we won't worry about that, we can cut that later when we export it. So we have our globe. I'm gonna lock that. Don't need to do anything else with it right now. Except maybe, give it that little guy that I saw. Okay, lock that bad boy. So that puts our globe asset on there.